Hello Malika, hello Michael, uh, and anyone else who'd like to uh, learn the royal and noble game of chess. Chess is played uh, on a board like this. Uh, it's got black pieces on that side, and of course white pieces on this side. The aim is exactly to capture the king. The king is that one, and of course the king is also this one here. And of course, there are rules on how the pieces move. And of course, uh, there are also rules, the basic rules. Of course, everybody has to know them. The first thing you have to know is that this is the king. The king has got a cross on top, just like the king also on the other side. And of course, this is the queen here. Now, the white queen must be on a white square when you start the game. Same with the other side, the black queen must be on a black square. And of course, um, the names of the pieces, um, this one here is known as a castle or a rook, and that's known as a horse or a knight with a K, and that's a bishop, and of course that's a queen, and that's a king, and that's of course bishop again, and of course that's the horse, which is a knight, and of course that's a rook. And the ones in the front here, they are known as pawns, you know, and also on the other side. The first ones here, they are known as pawns. Pawns are basically like foot soldiers, so you're trying, the white is trying to capture the king on the other side. If you lose the king on any one of the sides, you also lose the game. So that's the whole thing about it. Now, don't forget, uh, the board which you use, of course, has got numbers that this one here, it's a C, but a C uh, with a 5 on that side, so that's a 5. So that square here is a C5. Now the numbers are there if you're noting the game, if you're, you want to write it down to record it, that's how they work. Um, but then, um, the values of the pieces, the queen has got nine points, uh, the bishop has got three points, and uh, the knight has got three points, and the rook has got five points. The pawns, all of them here, they have one point each. The same on the other side, the pawns have got one point each. So if I take your pawn, you take mine, it's a fair game. If I take your queen and you take mine, it's a fair game. But if you lose a bigger piece for a smaller one, then you're starting to be in trouble. Yes, how the pieces move is very important for you to know because there are rules. And of course, if you touch a piece, you have to move it. That's one of the rules as well. And of course, when you put the board, you know, you make sure that the white square is on your right hand side. Yes, that's one of the rules as well. Just like I said, if you touch a piece, you have to move it. And of course, if you touch a piece like that and put it here, if you haven't let it go, you haven't finished your move first. But the moment you leave it, then your move is finished, so you cannot change. That's, those are the rules. Yes, um, now, how the pieces move. It's very important for you to know how the pieces move. Like this, that's the horse, or you call it a knight. That's the only piece which can jump. So it jumps by counting one, two, three. It moves from a black square to a white square. It makes an L shape. So from here, it can also move one, two, three, making the same L shape. It can be shape, L shape to the left or to the right. And it can also capture in the same way. So it can go one, two, three. Capturing, you take the piece and put it out of the board. That's how chase happens. So let me show you now. I've just shown you how uh, the knight moves, but the pawns, all of them, they move one step at a time. Yes, one step at a time. The only exception is when they start, like if he's starting from here, he can move one, two spaces just to open. So every one of the pawns can move two if you open, but if it moves once first, then you cannot, you cannot move to again, not at all. So that's the thing. The pawns will go straight in their own line, but they can capture on the diagonal, so it can capture like that and take out the other piece as well. 
So that's a rule. And the pawns do not go backwards, not at all. They always go forward. Yes, and the other thing you have to know is the bishops now. That's a bishop. This is bishop on a white, and this bishop is on a black. The bishops move in diagonals. I think you know what diagonal is? Those are diagonals. Diagonals and diagonals. It can move as far as it wants. It's up to you. You're not forced at all. It can also capture where it's going. Yes. So that's about the bishop. And the other piece which I just already started to show you is the knight. The knight is the only piece which jumps. One, two, three. The next one is going to be one, two, three. And it moves on like that. And the other piece which I have to show you is actually um, the rook. The rook moves straight and straight. So the best way for the rook to move, I'll show you in a minute uh, when I show you about castling. And uh, the other piece which I would like you to know is the queen. The queen has got nine points. And the king has got no points because if you lose the king, you lose the game. Uh, the pawns have got one point each and uh, the knight has got three points and the rook has got five points. So when you lose a bigger piece for a smaller one, it means your game is actually going southwards. So very easy, you're going to lose the game. So as I said, uh, the bishops, they move in diagonals. Now the queen, which is this one, it also moves in diagonals, but also it moves straight and straight and straight. It can go as far as it wants. It's up to you. So the, the queen moves like the bishop. It also moves like uh, the rook. Don't forget that. And the other thing is, um, when you do play chess, if you touch a piece, you must move it. If you leave it, if you hold it like that, you haven't yet finished your move. So when you leave it, that's when you finish your move. So it's the same on the other side. That will come through like that. Um, you have to respect the other player so you don't distract them. So I'm just telling you all the rules. As I said, you know, it's very important for you to learn the game. When you place the board as a whole, make sure that the white square is on your right. It's very important. And of course, uh, the queen also, which is a white queen, must be on its own color, which is white as well. So the other queen on the other side will be on the black. That's very important. Yes, always white is the one who starts. So what's the best move? The best move for a white every time, this is just a first lesson for you, is to move the pawn in front of the king twice. So you go like that. The aim is for you to open for the bishop to come out and also you're opening for your queen to come out. That's why that's the best move. Of course other people they play others as the best move, that's fine, it's up to them. And um, you can see there are numbers here. There's A here and there's B, C. These numbers are used when you have to write down your, your moves. So that's a C uh, and that's a over there it's a six. So that square here is actually C6. So you, you, you there's a coordination. So that's the whole thing about it. And the other thing you have to know as a chess player, chess has got three phases. There's what you call the opening. And of course, that's the first one. And there's what you call the middle game. The opening is basically your opening your pieces, you're developing them so that they can attack the other opponent at another time. So don't hurry that you finish a game in two moves. No, you must first of all open the pieces for black and white. And of course, you also have to, you call that developing your pieces. Um, the other thing is, you also have to know that after the opening game, then you have the, what you call number two, the middle game. When the pieces, some of them are out, Maybe they are not. And then when there are only a few pieces on the board, you call that the end game. The game is about to come to an end. So that's very important. 
as a chess player you have to know that because you're learning now the king moves only one space at a time so the king will move from here to there one space at a time or to there one space at a time whereas the queen can go as far as it wants the rook as far as it wants the pawns will go only forward and then the knight will count one two three it moves an l shape and of course it's going to go one two three moves in an l shape as well so basically that's how the pieces move yes uh, is that clear yes don't forget to uh, subscribe and of course to like and of course to share as well uh, the pieces as i said is got value so you have to know if you exchange a big piece for a big piece, like a, a queen has got nine points, if you exchange with another queen, then it's a fair game. This has got three points, you exchange maybe uh, with a knight on the other side, it's a fair game. And then the rook has got five points, if you exchange that with uh, another piece, same value is alright. So you must be aware that when you exchange pawn for a pawn, one point for one point, it's alright. Otherwise, don't lose. Don't forget, when you lose the king, you lose the game. So you have to defend the king all the time. As I said, the king has got a cross over there. And of course, on the other side, that's the king as well. Now, there's a special move. They call it castling. Castling happens when there's no peace between the king and the rook. So the king this time can move two spaces to the right. One, two. And then you take the rook and put it here. So basically you are hiding your, your king this side and then you are actually exposing your rook to come out. Don't forget the rook goes straight lines and of course straight lines. So that's known as castling. It actually hides away the king. And the other move which you are, have to be aware of is when any one of the pawns, they come to the end there, you call that queening. You can, if this comes to the end, it doesn't happen many times, but it does. If it comes to the end, you, are glad, you can actually take any pieces which was captured and then you can put it back. So you have to be aware that that's known as queening. The other special move is known as castling. Castling is, if my, not castling, uh, it's empowering. I've just told you about castling, whereby you change the king and the queen. You can do it on the queen side, you can also do it on the king side. If you do it on the queen side, like this, as I said, there must be nothing in between for you to do castling. So you take the king, you move it, one, two, and then you take the castle, put it on the other side. Don't forget that. The other move is what you call in passing. So, in a scenario whereby my pawn has come that far here, now this one, it wants to come here, but it's going to pass this. So, instead of stopping here, that pawn has passed over to here. So that's, if you want, you can capture that pawn as if it stopped here, because it's running away from that pawn. So when it does that, you can take that this pawn as if it moved here, so you take it out. That's known as impassing. Impassing happens, of course, anytime you want, but it only happens in that scenario. Yes, the other thing you have to know as well is um, when you are threatening the other, the other um, king, like in this case, I take my queen, I put it here, I'm in line with that king, I say check. Check means your king is under threat with my queen, or it can be probably with a bishop, you say check. So the next move for that is either you take away your king, or if you don't take away your king, you just defend it with the pawn so that that line is blocked. That's known as check. Uh, you have to say check. Of course, I've heard people that you don't need it. you don't need to say it, but of course you want the other person. And then, if the king has nowhere to go, you know there are times when the king has nowhere to go. Like in this case, you call that checkmate. In other words, you cannot take that queen because it's protected that by that bishop there. Yes. So in short, this is um, playing chess. Chess is a, it improves your mind really, it's a lovely game and of course you're gonna
I remember when I was in high school, uh, all my friends, we all played chess. All of us, we passed, you know, our senior exams, all, all the chess players. So you never know, but it's good for you to learn. And of course, uh, you're going to improve your mind. So Malika, Michael, and everyone else, that's the game of chess in a few minutes. Okay, don't forget to subscribe. And of course, to like and of course, to share. Okay, guys, take care. Ta-da.